Cliff and I have been looking at uh, porch fire tables now for a couple months and unfortunately the fire tables, the size of them that we want are roughly between four and five thousand dollars and I could not justify spending that much money on something that we could only use a couple months out of the year. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and build our own fire table. So um, I looked up a ton of different plans online and kind of decided to go with one that I felt that was the most stable cost-effective and one that I could personally tackle by myself. So I did go ahead already as you can see and have started to assemble my project um, but the first step of this process is to get the metal 2x4s and the metal rails um, that we need and cut them down to length. I did that by just measuring with the, the of course tape measure, used a square for my vertical lines and then just used tin snips to go ahead and cut that. I did try to use the metal grinder, but I found that I wasn't able to see my lines appropriately with the grinder, so that's when I decided to switch to the tin snips, thanks to a recommendation by my dad. Um, but we will continue working here. So just going to give you guys a quick little update here. Um, the entire framework for the fireplace is now complete. Um, the overall length of this is going to be approximately 5 feet and then our width is approximately, I think we made it, um, let me see here, I actually wrote it. Uh, it's going to be a total of 30 inches wide. Um, so when I actually made the um, dimensions of the metal pieces, I took away two inches so our overall cut length is 58 by 28 roughly give or take and that's going to account for the thickness of the wonder board that we're going to be putting on here to attach the thin set to um, so <clears throat> as far as my structure goes most of the horizontal pieces are just the metal rail that you can get right at Home Depot and I'll include a link in the description below of all my materials that I used um, but for the most part all of the horizontal pieces are metal rail and then the vertical pieces are metal 2x4s. Um, and those were not the easiest for me to work with, only because um, this is the first project of something like this that I've ever done. So rather than having probably the proper tools to use, um, I just went ahead and used tin snips. You could probably use like a metal grinder, but I couldn't see my lines very well. And the first time I used it, <clears throat> my cut was super jagged. So um, I just went ahead and used the metal tin snips so that it kept that line um, as smooth as it could. And then I just attached each of my connection points with these uh, half inch sinkers. Um, and I'll show you those too and put those in the link. Um, but they worked pretty well. They sunk the metal together fairly easily. Um, and I'll show you just all these connection points right here too and kind of how I went ahead and connected everything. So on each corner, I just went ahead and put two 2x4s two kind of side to side there um, just to give it some extra support. And then as far as the top goes, um, again, I just used that metal rail. <clears throat> and I cut these um, this area out right here so this would fit in flush just to give it some more stability. And I didn't want to cut that completely off just because that's a good anchor point there. And you can see those anchor screws um, sunk right into that metal really well. Um, this little area sticking up here is just because of that cut that I made. It wasn't the smoothest, but as far as uh, these 2x4s here, what I did is I measured the total length and then divided it by 4 so that I knew how large my spaces had to be and then just measured accordingly and then just put a 2x4 in just so that the support and the load of that um, wonder board was going to be adequately supported. And then here we have our hole for our fire pan. Unfortunately my fire pan isn't in quite yet so once that's in we'll make sure that that fits. Um, but I just used metal 2x4s here to support those and again here at the both ends. Um, so we'll double check that once that's in. 
And then here on the one end, I did leave a two by four out of that gap because we're going to use that as a door to put the propane tank in and out of. Um, so all in all, I think so far it's coming out pretty well. Um, there's definitely been a learning curve here and there, but you'll have that. And then as you can see, my little assistant is sleeping on the job, but you'll have that. Good help is hard to find. And I have gone ahead and cut um, most of my Wonderboard pieces out and have started to attach those, as you can see right here. So that's what I'm going to apply the thin set directly to is on this um, Wonderboard that we got right at Home Depot. So far, that's been pretty easy to work with. I just went ahead and measured my dimensions out and then used a chalk line to make my lines and then used a circular saw to go ahead and cut that. You'll want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses as that's super, super dusty. Um, but these are the screws here that I'm using to attach my Wonder Board to. Um, again, I just got those right at Home Depot. And those have been working very, very good to sink this Wonder Board into this metal. I'm not having any trouble at all um, getting that to sink right in. So we will continue getting this Wonder Board attached. And then um, we just have to apply the seam tape. And then it will be ready to roll and get the thin set attached. Okay, so a little update with the fire table. We have all the cement board screwed on to each of the sides with the exception of the top that is not secured yet. We need to, as you can see, still cut out our hole for the fire pan here in the middle. Um, and on the top, just because of the depth of the lip of my fire pan, I went ahead and used a double layer of the cement board. This top one here is the cement board that we used on the sides. And then this bottom layer, as you can see, is just slightly thinner. Scout, we don't need your help. Is just slightly thinner than the rest of it. Um, this is the cement board that I've used on all of the sides. I just got that right at Home Depot. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is measure out our hole for the drop-in fire pan and get that cut out. And then we will be ready to start using our seam tape. This hole here I left for the door so that we can hide the propane tank right inside there. So I have gotten the hole for the uh, fire plate cut out here. Um, I just measured the center of that hole. So what I kind of did here is rather than line it up perfectly with the hole I already had in the framework, I wanted that exterior lip of that pan to actually sit on the inside um, of the cement board. So I kind of had a border there. So I just went ahead and measured my actual fire pan, drew lines in, and then used the circular saw to get that cut out. Um, and we went ahead and attached those with the cement board screws. So the next step for us is to utilize this cement um, board joint tape. And I'm going to go around every joint um, and just kind of secure it down so it has another layer of reinforcement. Um, so this is the tape that I'm using and we'll get to it. Okay, so our uh, fire table has now four layers total of the thin set mortar on there. And we're just kind of waiting for that to finish drying and finish setting. Um, but this is just the standard color that the gray comes in. Um, it actually almost looks kind of like a beigey cream once it dries completely, which is perfect for what I want, but you can also buy mortar dye that you could add in to the mixture if you wanted a different color. The colors are quite limited from what I could find, but um, we're very happy with the way this color has turned out. And you can apply your thin set any way you want. Um, I did start by using just a trowel and the uh, float tool. But I was not very happy with the way it looked when it was just flat. So what I actually did was just applied it um, by hand, meaning put a rubber glove on and just kind of like went in circular motion, smoothing it out along the way. 
and uh, Cliff and I are really happy with the way it looks. It, give it gives it some texture and that it also kind of gives it some dynamic in the color. I don't know how well you can see that, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with my fire pit abilities here. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I do have to buy just a small amount of mortar to kind of do this trim line here around the inlay. And then the finishing touches here on the door. I bought um, a handle for the door and then some hinges just at the hardware store to kind of put that on to help keep that fastened. Due to the dimensions of our table, I'm not able to fit a standard grill tank under there, so we did go ahead and just order a horizontal 20 pound propane tank that will fit through the door perfectly and then we'll just lay horizontally inside there. So in addition to obviously the whole table, I had shown you guys before that I put this door in the end here. So down here, this is just the gas control key, um, the igniter. This is optional, you don't have to do that. It's just battery powered igniter right there. And then I just added this little handle, obviously for ease of um, access to this area. And then inside we have our horizontal propane tank. And then I had cut out a small hole here in the door for everything to fit in and then just added these two magnets that are pretty high strength just to help keep the door um, secured to the actual table here. But it's done. It only took a long, long time. But it was worth it. What's the key for, little kids or something? So with this key here, um, it's just a gas control, or excuse me, propane control. So you can either leave it in there if you're sitting out here, or if you wanted to remove that, um, which we will end up doing, obviously. It's just a nice feature when our nieces and nephews are over. There's no accidental turning the flame up and down. So this is how you would control your flame size here with the amount of gas or propane that's being released. So that's all the way up there, which is super hot. And then here's down. So that just helps control your flame size. Pretty awesome. Yep. I think I did a pretty good job. Do you have any suggestions for anybody that plan on building one? Any tricks of the trade you learned through the process? Honestly, there's a couple things that I would do different. Um, when I had cut out the, the center here to put the fire pan in, obviously the fire pan is completely square, but um, the top of the table, I didn't double check to make sure that was perfectly square. So once I dropped my pan in, without really damaging the perimeter here, um, I had to pretty much leave the pan in once I, you know, was through cementing it, which I, as you saw, put painter's tape down, which helped keep the cement off of the pan. However, that was an absolute nightmare to remove just because I could not um, then remove the pan. So I don't know that I would do that again. So definitely make sure everything is square. Um, you can kind of ad lib as you go with the thin set mortar, but it, it was very difficult for me just because I don't have experience with it. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, we were looking online at a very similar fire table as this, a little bit smaller, and it was going to cost us roughly $3,000 um, to have a high quality table like this. And I was able to build this by myself, obviously it took a lot of time, but it ended up coming in just under $800. So I was very happy with you know the the uh, quality for the cost and half of our cost was tied up in the actual fire table and the glass. We did purchase a high quality um, fire pan and high quality glass just because we knew that was either going to make or break the project. So you could definitely get a lower quality fire pan and glass and save a ton of money, but I think it's worth it. 
Wow. Yeah, it We're looks really nice. Happy with it. The only thing left that I have to do is go ahead and um, seal all the thin set mortar. I'm just waiting for that to get here and then I will completely seal and waterproof everything. But for right now it's fine. It's underneath the covered porch, but it will just be nice as an extra layer of added protection. So here you have it and I will put um, a link in the description with all of the materials that I used, um, direct links to every product from Home Depot that we utilized. So that will make it easy if anybody's interested. And if you liked watching Kaylee build this, hit the like button and leave her a comment and she might build something else for you guys.